Hi. So welcome to Yoga with Zoe. Um, this week's lesson is all about the shoulders. Um, so obviously uh, this is recording. I can't see you to tell you how um, you know you're looking or you know just to give you any advice. So obviously you've got to adapt and you've got to just listen to your body and we always should. Um, so make yourself comfortable. Um, close your eyes. Um, just spend a few moments just laying on the floor and as you're laying on the floor just starting just to begin to notice your breath. Noticing the ground behind the body. I'm going to lie down just so you don't feel left out. I'm going to move towards the back of the room. And you can admire me lying down on the floor. You shouldn't be admiring, you should be doing this yourself, shouldn't you? So, yeah, resting down into the floor. Having your legs out in front of you or having your legs bent is entirely your choice. And just observing really the comings and goings of the breath. Roll your head just a little bit from side to side. Noticing how it feels to let your head actually just yield into the floor. So really think about giving your weight to gravity. So I'm trying not to let any tension stay in the neck. And what you, do, you notice as you turn your head actually is your chin comes into your shoulder and as you turn your head to the ceiling your chin lifts away from your chest and comes back into the shoulder. And actually what you're doing here is you are twisting the neck, notice that twist of the neck. Take your head so it comes to centre and just again let gravity be felt in the head and neck. So let's begin our movement practice, bringing your, knee, your feet in just in front of your hips. Take your hands up in front of your chest and just think about your shoulders dropping back and being supported by the floor. And then we're going to take the right hand and place it over onto the left shoulder. And then look the left hand and bring it under the right shoulder. Walk your hands in towards your shoulders. I'm just going to demonstrate this sitting just in case you have no idea what I've just done. <clears throat> so you can give yourself a bit of a hug. So just imagine that I'm lying down if you are looking at this film. So you've got your shoulder, your shoulders, your elbows dropping down onto your chest. I'm just going to turn to one side. And if you were to look down at your elbows, you might see that they've actually crossed each other or even sitting on top. Bring down your hands towards each other. And see if it's possible. It might be that you can bring the lower hand to connect to the upper hand and then you're going to just let the thumbs rest down onto the forehead and just take some breaths into the back of the shoulders. So again, still laying down. I'll go back to my main position at the back of the room. <clears throat> Might be nice at this point to start to take your elbows away from the chest and bring them back down onto your chest again just play with that how does that feel and again maybe just let your chest your elbows rest on the chest and again take that breath into the shoulders so it might be not quite nice to kind of mimic what's going on with the arms of the legs so take your right leg and cross it over the left and it might be that your right foot will hook behind your left shin. And again, just let the foot rest into the floor. It might be then quite nice to pick up the left foot and bring it backwards and forwards, kind of taking it into reclining eagle pose of the legs. But this might, again, might be a little bit too much. So again, if it feels nice to let those toes settle on the floor, let that happen. It might be you are going to go for unhooking the leg. Unhook the hands, unhook the legs, and we're going to cross the opposite way. So again, bringing the arms up in front of the chest. Left hand goes to right shoulder. Right hand goes under and around towards the left armpit. Again, walk the hands in. And it might be that this is all you're going to do. You might go nowhere other than here. 
but then you might be able to bring the hands towards each other, hooking the elbows and again connecting. Again, if you can't connect, that's absolutely fine. Just keep drawing the hands towards each other. And again, you might just want to rest the lower hand on the forehead, just so you're not working so intently. And we're just noticing here that this obviously is stretching the shoulders across the back. And again, we have that other little option, lifting the elbows and again, bringing the elbows in towards the chest. So again, this is an option. And taking your left leg, crossing it over the right is another option. And hooking that left foot behind the right shin is another option. Again, check in here. Unhooking the legs, unhooking the hands. Bring your hands down by your side and take a breath. Just notice how your shoulders surrender into the floor. So bring your hands to your knees next and circle. Just notice how, how when circling the knees, you do start to feel that movement in the pelvis. Massage the pelvis, massage the low back. And then let's take ourselves to seated. So bring yourself up. And I'm going to move a little bit closer to the front of the mat. <coughs> Excuse me. So take yourself to all fours. I'm just going to move this way because I stay a little bit closer to camera. <coughs> so I'm going to circle here. So I'm just bringing my weight into my left hand, forward to the left hand, to the center to the right hand and then back, so circling into the shoulder. And I'm closing my eyes and have a little feel of what that is like. Feeling the change of weight in the hands. Feeling the change of pressure in the shoulders. Again, let the breath flow. And go in the opposite direction. Take yourself to centre and bring your bottom down towards your heels. So it might be at this point a nice idea maybe to have your toes untucked. Maybe you're going to grab a cushion and place it under your knees because I know we've all got different knees. And taking yourself towards a child's pose. So again, find that comfortable place. I've got a little gap between my knees and that is allowing me just to have a, a space for my belly to breathe. I'm not collapsed all the way down, it's not an excessive pose, there, there is that support through the belly. And again, breathing into the backs of the shoulders. And the more you breathe here into the belly, you might notice the expansion of the shoulders and the sinking down to the hips with your breath. So again, breath is a lovely thing to experience in our yoga practice. So I'm now looking to my hands and I'm taking my right hand and I'm placing it on the ground just underneath my left armpit and then I'm walking that hand out to the left and it's beginning to twist my chest. I can begin just to kind of look towards my left shoulder. I might even feel comfortable enough to bring my head to the floor. My palm is down, you can bring the, turn the palm up. So again, have a little play. In fact, I would just encourage you to, to roll that hand on the floor and just see how it feels and then allow yourself to settle in your favourite place. You can push back with that right hand into the floor and again that will just deepen the sensations. But you might think this is a little bit similar to thread the needle and you'll be right. So what we could do is come up onto all fours. So I like to push with the shins and flow up. And then this right hand again, I'm going to reach it up towards the ceiling bringing it down and then this time just behind the left wrist slide it in a line elbow comes to the floor bending that left elbow and resting the shoulder down and looking again up towards the right shoulder my head's on the floor and again i can begin to push down with that right hand into the floor again deep in sensations i'm just checking in on where my hips are my hips feel like they're centered over my knees and again breathing into the right side
coming back to centre. Exhale, coming back down to child's pose. Side breaths in child. Looking towards the hands and then taking your left hand, placing it just underneath your right armpit on the floor and then walking the hand out towards the wall. I want you to notice how you start to naturally turn. And again, as I did like with the other hand, I'm just turning that left hand up and down, just checking how it feels in the shoulder. And then allowing it to come to rest and then pushing into the floor a little bit of that left hand. And again, just noticing how that seems to activate and you'll feel the muscles in the back of the left shoulder. So staying here or coming up to all fours, so push with shins. Inhaling, turning the chest. And exhaling, taking the left hand, sliding it all the way across. And again, feeling how the elbow comes to the floor, the shoulder comes to the floor, the head comes to the floor. And again, looking up towards the right shoulder, and again, this left hand is pushing back into the floor. And again, staying here for five breaths. And again, just checking where the hips are. Roughly in line with the knees. Spine, taking a little twist. Coming back to centre. And then we're going to just come into something that we have been practicing in my lessons, which is um, kind of an elbow press, a uh, shoulder press. Sorry. So I'm rolling up the sleeve just so you can see my elbows. So I'm staying again on all fours. Elbows are staying straight. And what I'm going to do now is drop my chest down between the arms. <clears throat> so drop the chest, keeping the arms straight. And what I can feel now is my shoulders have kind of picked themselves up off the back and then pushed down with the hands. Push, 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 and you're going to feel your shoulders slide across your ribs. Your head might want to fall, going into a very natural soft arch. And again, sinking down towards the floor, tailbone lifts. And again, push into hand. And I'll let you choose where the breath feels best suited, whether or not you breathe in on the way down or breathe in on the way up. Choose what feels best. Notice that it might feel nice to lift the tailbone as you drop your chest and look forwards and it will feel really nice to let your tailbone to come down as you push into the hand. So again, taking this into natural cat cow. Okay, so let's take ourselves just for a moment back into child's pose. So bring your knees back under the body and slide down onto all fours. So from here, we are going to take ourselves into plank pose. So push yourselves back up onto all fours. And plank um, can be experienced, obviously, on knees or um, not on knees. So if you're going to come into it from uh, from knees, uh, bring your weight forward. So you're going to try and find your shoulders going over the fingertips, letting your hips go down towards the floor, pulling your belly tight. So you shouldn't feel that you're sagging and dropping. There is a, a neutral sensation through the spine using the muscles of the, of the belly. And you can then lift the knees up and push the heels back. Keep pushing down into the floor. Strange little thing to suggest now, but imagine that, I'm, that the toes are going to kick you up to the bum. So tighten the glute muscles a little bit, really drawing in through the pelvic floor, using inner strength support, really pushing out again through the heels. And then from here, relax your knees towards the floor. Think then about relaxing the front of the hips, letting your belly lengthen. Keep the hands pushing to the floor, coming up into our up dog. Toes lengthen back. And then push with your hands, push your hands into the floor, bring yourself back up into your plank. So you might come up to kneeling plank, you might lift the knees and come back, back up into full plank. Exhale, knees come to the floor, relax the hips, let the belly come forwards. Again, come up into our up dog. 
inhale push with the hands coming back up to plank so it's a bit of a shoulder work in that we are using these arms to push ourselves back up into plank exhale inhale exhale exhale inhale exhale from your up dog push with your hands keep the knees on the floor and allow yourself to soften back into child pose maybe give your hands a bit of a roll around at this point So walk your hands into your knees and take yourself onto a, just a seat. This is just a little bit of a sensation thing, really. So from here, we're going to take ourselves into um, <clears throat> dog. But I want to just play with this for a little moment. So bring your hands to prayer in front of you and then push your hands forwards. And then look down at your chest. <coughs> Excuse me, I know I've got the biggest, fattest jumper on in the known to humanity with this. But my shoulders have come kind of forwards like the, the heads of the um, heads of the humans have come forwards of the shoulders and my pecs have tightened and then I'm going to just turn the palms away like I'm swimming and then I'm going to bring those hands back and then I'm pushing my palms away imagining now that the two walls either side of me are coming in I'm just actually going to rest my hands on the wall just as a to feel that and so in doing this my chest has, has opened and I can feel that the heads of the humerus have gone from that four position to a more side-on position. And I'm just gonna then start to draw that shoulder blade down the back. So I just wanna feel now I've got really kind of open chest, shoulder settled on the back. Now from this place, I'm just gonna try and keep the shoulders where they are, bringing the arms forwards. And again, so what I'm trying to avoid is the head of the humerus coming forwards of the shoulders. I'm just trying to keep those, the head of the humerus kind of in line with the shoulders, if that makes any sense. Don't let it come forwards. And again, what we can do at this position is Imagine that it's in front of us as a wall. I'm just trying to push it back again. I'm just going to demonstrate on the wall. Push it like just imagine we can feel it through the hands, push up into the arms again. Those shoulders are staying on the back. So again, it's all about trying to keep this chest nice and broad. So now from this place, place your hands down onto the floor, onto the mat in front of you. So keeping that sensation of broadness through the chest. We're going to walk out and um, ourselves into plank pose. So bring your weight, your weight, your weight finger, yeah, your shoulders on your fingertips. Knees are coming back, lifting the knees, and then push with your hands, keeping that sensation of the head of the humerus being in line with the shoulders, walking yourself up into downward facing dog. So again, you want to feel that those shoulder blades are on the back, chest is broad. Bend the knees a little bit and Keep your hands pushing forwards. So I just want you to think about how your spine would look if you were to look at yourself side on. Are you round the spine? Are your legs straight, bending the knees? Would that allow you to bring that spine, let all those curves come back into their natural place? Again, coming back down onto hands and knees, take a moment to pause. And then we're going to do that one more time. We're going to take ourselves again back up onto all four. So we'll just do it through the front of the mat. So again, just bringing that, making sure that the chest feels nice and broad. Bring those hands forwards again, head of the humerus in line with shoulders. And then taking yourselves into plank rising up so again feel those shoulder blades staying on the back going up onto the ball of the feet let's take ourselves again forwards and back onto plank so here we go <clears throat> from plank drop your knees down onto the floor you can come down onto the floor 
by bending your elbows and taking the belts all the way down this way. But I'm going to try something else and, I, um, and that is to come down from Chaturanga. So what I'm going to start to do is bend the elbows, keeping them close into the body, using the arms to slowly bring myself down. When you're on the floor, then point your toes. And we're going to then go into a baby curve, into cobra pose. So I'm looking at the floor, but then I'm looking across at my shoulders. Again, what I don't want to do is have those shoulders rolling down towards the floor with the elbows wide. So I'm going to pick the shoulders up, roll them round back and down. So again, the head of the humerus is in, is in line with the shoulders. Collarbones broad. Pointing the toes out behind me, pressing the tops of feet into the floor. Really think I could reach that wall behind me with my feet. Bringing then the hands onto the buttocks or the low back. As I inhale, I'm using then the muscles of the back to lift my head, keeping the gaze at the floor. So if you look forward, it's actually a little bit more unpleasant. It shortens the neck. So you want to just feel that back of the neck stays lengthened. And then exhale, come down. And again, just keep those shoulders resting on the back. Inhale, lifting up, pointing the toes, rise. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, placing those hands down, use your hands to push up and again sinking down to child's pose again at the end of the mat. Take five breaths here. What we can then begin to do is to let our elbows come into the floor from here, walk your hands towards each other and bring your hands to prayer. Have a look then at your elbows. If they are wider than the width of your shoulders, walk them in a little bit so they are in line with the width of the shoulders. And then start to bring your hands to prayer above your head. And then what you might want to do is maybe walk your elbows forwards a little bit. Forehead begins to rest towards the floor. So again, little adaptations of this might be that you're going to have a little block for your head. So again, you might be thinking, oh, this is horrible. Never want that, so you know, have an adjustment, bring your head down onto a block. It might be you've got a high block, it might be you're going to go for a low block. So, again, you're going to have the forehead on the block, and again, elbows walking forwards. And again, just changing that position of the block. And then let your hands come to the floor and have um, and to remove the block. From this place, just picturing now that in front of you, you've got a massive clock. And at the top of the clock is number 12. And your hands are like the hand on the clock. And I want you to reach the right hand out off the mat towards where number two might be. And then slide your left hand to where number one might be. Let your chest go with it. And again, take your gaze down to the floor between the arms. Your forehead might not meet the floor. Taking that breath all the way into the right shoulder, the left shoulder, the left ribs, the left hip. Lifting the gaze, bringing both hands again back towards, um, towards number 12. And then taking your left hand to where number 10 might be. And your right hand to where number 11 might be. And again, let your head come down to a natural place. And again, it might be you're going to have to place that block under the forehead. And again, we're breathing into the right side, the right ribs. Just taking six breaths here. So walking your hands back towards the front of the mat. Let's take ourselves up to all fours. Take your right foot and place it by your right hand. 
and then we're going to just keep those fingertips on the floor for a moment <clears throat> and I'd like you then to take your bottom back towards your heels as you do that lift up the toes of your right foot strengthening your right leg keep your hip off the floor so don't go all the way back and then bring yourself back placing that right foot down as you place the right foot down imagine you're going to pull that right heel underneath the body and then again push yourself forward push yourself back so you're going to use a push of the foot to bring your hips back and then use the ball of the foot to bring yourself back with the knee and again pull the heel under the body to bring the knee over toes and again push and again exhale inhale pull the ball of the foot to the floor and again sink into deep lunge and again push inhale and again exhale Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, push yourself back. To all four, uh, back to child again, sink down, push yourself again up to all four, stopping your left foot forward by your left hand. It might be you put your hand on the inside, we've all got different bodies. Again, just make sure that foot is comfortable, that the heel's down, and then again, start the process. Push with your left foot, let that bring your hips back, foot begins to lift, keep the heel on the floor, leg straightens. And then to come back again, lead with the ball of the foot, push it into the floor, feel how that footprint, imagine yourself walking, it's going to propel you forwards, heel comes under. Again, push forwards with the foot, sends the hips back, you can let the hands walk with it if you wish, and again, sinking down, pulling the heel under. Again, push, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, feel like a little spider, and just show this side on, again, And then taking yourselves on to all four. And then we've got two ways again of doing our dog. I mean, my natural way of doing dog is to come from all fours, dropping toes at the bottom down to heels, spreading the hand, using the hands to push you up. But it's actually quite a short dog. So this is really nice, but it's also quite nice to explore it from plank again. You get a longer sensation through the body and through the uh, legs. So again, explore coming into your dog from plank. So again, find your plank lifting knees and then pushing the ground away bending the knees don't move the feet and again resting in your plank in your dog sorry side breath so again walking those feet in if that is your preference taking your right foot and placing it by your right hand bend your right knee and push yourself up to standing so pelvis, where is it? Is it upright? Where is your heart? Those are your hips. So again, check out that you've got those lower ribs floating over the front of the pelvis. And then begin to bend your right knee, pushing back with your left leg, keeping on the ball of the feet. Bringing your hands up towards the sky. Roll, bring the arms back and circle. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. You can make this even more challenging by bending the left knee. Keeping the knee over toes. That left knee goes towards the floor. Feeling the circling of the shoulders. Bring your hands out in front of the body. And just imagine that you're just going to give like a really big beach ball a hug. So you're going to Bring again those heads to the humerus forwards of the chest 
and look down towards that front knee. Start to bring your right hand up onto your left shoulder, left hand towards the left armpit, looking down towards the floor. And then start to bring the hands together. So actually, actually if you notice that, you should feel you've got a really kind of sunken chest. Now we're going to bring those hands together and lift the chest and look forwards, coming back to neutral spine. Again, you might be able to flex the hands, thumbs maybe resting on the shoulders, so eagle warrior. Straighten that front that back leg if you need, bend the back knee if you wish. You might have been playing with this because I noticed I naturally drifted back into warrior with a straight leg. And then release the arms and lower them down. We're going to take ourselves into a balance. Use your right leg to propel yourself forwards, crossing your left leg over your right leg. So I've got the toes of my left foot on the floor, knees bent. And then I'm going to just see how it feels to begin to bend my right knee, taking a seat on that right knee. Left leg, does it want to stay with the toes on the floor? Does the, do the toes want to come off the floor? Are they happy to hook? They are, mine are quite happy to hook behind that right shin. Doesn't always happen. Arms are out like little wings, but I'm quite happy to bring that right hand to the right shoulder, left hand to left shoulder, bringing those hands back towards eagle. Unhooking the arms, unhooking the legs, lowering down, moving from the hips, bringing those hands back down to the floor and walking myself back to my preferred dog. Five breaths in dog. Left foot steps by the left hand. Bending the left knee and again use that leg to push yourself to standing. Where is the pelvis? It's in the middle. Where are the ribs floating over the hips? So again, what we try not to do is to kind of put tuck the hips back and push the ribs forward. So in neutral spine, feel that your pelvis is carrying the spine. And again, I'm going to bend my left knee, push back with my right heel. Everything just again feels like it's being carried by the pelvis, supported by the leg. Choose if I or not to dip my right knee towards the floor again, keeping that left knee over the left foot. And then I'm going to come into this idea of hugging the big beach ball. So arms are in front of the body. Again, imagine I really love the ball. I'm going to bring it into my chest, lowering down. This time the left hand is coming towards my right shoulder. The right hand's gone towards my left armpit. Again, give myself a hug. Elbows are crossed and stacked. Now I'm bringing the hands towards each other whilst beginning to look forwards. And again, I can connect, but you don't have to. Again, check on where your warrior is. Open out the arms. Use the left leg to propel and cross. Right foot, big toes on the floor to start with. And I'm just taking that little seat on the left knee. And again, I can, oh, I can hook that right leg behind. And again, keeping the arms out wide or taking yourself back with the left arm woo, towards your right shoulder and hooking. You're gonna feel your thighs really squeezing together. Unhook and step back and soften back into child or dog for a moment. So let's take our right foot to the front of the mat. And then we're going to pivot. So we're now facing the long side of the mat. So the legs are wide. Walk your hands up the shins to take yourself to standing. 
looking forward. So this is going to help us get in some really nice little warriors. So um, heart, heart, head, heart, keep it going. Keep these aligned. In fact, what's quite nice is to take your thumbs to place them on the lower ribs and then onto the front of your pelvis. And then we're going to move our right foot. Turn your right foot out. Knee's going to move, but you want to try and keep the pelvis and ribs aligned. Arms are opening out. Looking towards your right hand. Maybe widen your feet. Then pause. Lift the toes and the left foot. Spread them out. Plant them down, little toe to big toe. So again, feeling then the bones are nicely lined up. You've got support of the left leg. And now bend your right knee, keeping everything central. Knee bends, gazing outwards. Shoulders roll. Turn the palms away from you and bring the hands together behind you. So I'm going to bring my, you can't see them, I bring them into steeple move you. So thumbs are crossing, big fingers touching, big fingers, and then the other ones across. So again, that chest is nice and open. And what I haven't done is again, push those ribs forward. So again, I'm thinking about those lower ribs connected almost to the top of the pelvis. Keep in this position if this is more comfortable, but I'm quite happy then to turn my chest. So feeling it as a turn through the ribs, Looking down towards my right big toe, I'm going to take an inhale and then the exhale, I'm taking the pelvis. The pelvis is then guiding down towards Humble Warrior. I can see my right shoulder coming towards my right knee and those hands are still connected. I'm taking the gaze down towards the So relax the neck here. Wherever you stopped, lift again the toes of the left foot, roll them back and sink them down. Turn your chest towards the floor and pivot. So you're facing the front of the mat. I'm actually going to turn away from you for a second now. I want you to then drop yourself down at your left knee down. And then we can take ourselves into a few little things. What the first thing we could do is take ourselves into a twist. So we're going to keep that left hand on the floor. And the reason this is in the clasp of the shoulder is because it's all about feeling that shoulder support the body. So let's bring our right hand to face forwards arc it towards the ceiling and let the chest turn. So again, as you're doing that, you'll feel that shoulder kind of come from sitting outwards to beginning to find its connection onto the ribs. Your left, your right foot, sorry, my right knee, it tends to, when I do this sometimes, kind of peek out to the side and that is because I've dropped weight into that little toe. So I want you to push down into that big toe, feel your footprint and that is going to guide that knee in. So again, I'm just going to spin myself around so I've got eye to the camera, so I can give you some more information. Your left knee, where is it? If it's under the body, would it be nice to walk it back? Would it be nice to pick up the back knee? So again, this is a bit of a weight-bearing exercise for that left hand. You might think, okay, this looks good. We could take this into a side plank. So I'm now going to lower my left knee and take my right foot to the back of the mat, letting my hips spin round from this forward position to a side position. So hips are stacked, left hands on the floor, left knees under the body, taking my gaze up to the hand. And there is another position and that is to take the left knee away, stepping it to the back of the mat. Releasing down. And let's come back up into downward facing dog. And then I just need to spin myself around so I'm facing the right way. Goodness gracious me. We're going to find our way again so that uh, our left foot comes to the front of the mat. Face the wrong way. There you go. Ooh, I'm so professional. 
and then spin yourself around. So you're facing the right side of the mat. So again, coming into deep lunge, uh, into deep fold. Feet are nice and wide. Feet parallel with the two sides of the mat. And again, walk your hands back up. I don't know why I spun around there. I convinced myself I was going to come the other way. Anyway, so we're going to repeat that process. The pelvis forwards, heart, head, everything's aligned. Thumbs, little fingers in those two little guide points. Turn your left foot out. Keep everything facing forwards. Arms floating out. Lifting the toes of the right foot, spread them out, sink them down. Legs nice and straight and supported. And then exhale, coming into our warrior two. Roll the shoulders. Good to do so you knock your equipment down. Turn the palms away from you. As you do that, you'll feel the shoulder blades roll forwards. Take the hands behind, again, connecting into steeple mudra. So thumbs are um, crossed, fingers are pointing, other fingers are crossed. Keeping your chest facing forward if that is comfortable, or turn your chest to face the left knee. Exhale, pelvis begins to tilt, feeling the belly lengthen down, the ribs. And again, taking that deep bow down towards the floor. Relax the neck. Again, I can feel that I've dropped into the inner arch of my right foot, so I'm lifting those toes up again and replanting the foot, feeling that little inner arch begin to lift. Lowering hands down and again, taking yourself down onto the floor. So again, I just need three positions so I can keep an eye on the camera. So here is my left knee at the front of the mat. My right hand is on the floor and I'm going to take myself into that twist. So again, I'm just checking. If your knee is under the hip, you're going to feel a little bit of round of the back. So you just want to place your hand on that back and walk your knee back. And I just want you to feel that your lower back lengthens out. And what we're trying to find is that you can't feel it pressing uh, the bones of that hand, uh, bones of the spine pressing into the, um, into the hand. So just coming into a more neutral spine. Now your left hand, the arm feet to the floor, turn it towards the ceiling and you're going to start to push into that right hand to support the shoulder. And again, my left knee naturally wants to come out, so I'm pushing down for the big toe, feeling the knee come in, and again, gazing up. Lifting that back knee because it's comfortable for me to do so, pushing into the floor of the hand, and again, just feeling how straight the spine feels. Again, we can stay here or we can go into those little side planks if we really, really want to. So lowering the right knee, taking the left foot to the back of the mat, and again, feeling how the pelvis tilts, right hand supporting the body, and I am just feeling that I can plant that left foot into the floor. I'm just going to come back onto that mat a little bit more, so I don't want to knock my thigh over. So again, staying with the right knee on the floor, or taking the right knee and straighten the leg. Turn the chest and sink down in child. So from here, we're coming towards the back of the mat, and this is a nice uh, back that you can do some lovely things for the belly. So coming on to your front, and um, I'll move back a tiny little bit so I'm still visible. Yeah. So we're coming into um, Sphinx Pose. I'm actually naturally coming to Sphinx Pose, but I'm going to walk you through into it. So walk your hands forwards. I know you can't see my hands, but they are forwards. And I'm looking at them, staying in line with my shoulders. I haven't widened them. And to go up into Sphinx Pose, we're going to start to bring the arms in towards the body, but I'm not going to let the elbows go out, so you have to push yourself up. The elbows stay close to the ribs. <clears throat> so start with the shoulders, shrug it back. Elbow stays close into the ribs, so don't let it go out to the side. And then shrug the other one back. And again, shrug the other one back. And you're finding 
a nice place. I don't want you to feel that you've got to really hold yourself up. So for me, my elbows are always slightly shorter forwards of my chest. And I can feel that I'm resting down through the bones into the elbow. And then then just checking on that lower back, how does it feel? I'm just going to change my position just so you can see what I mean. So obviously the higher the position, you might feel there's a bit more tenderness in that lower back. So you can always walk your elbows forwards if that feels better. And again, elbows are closer in by the ribs. And then this is the beautiful bit. Slowing down your breath and just... As you breathe in, your ribs, uh, your lungs are expanding. And your ribs. And you've got these muscles called the, inter called the intercostals, which widen your ribs for you when you breathe. So I just want you to notice that as you're breathing in, there's a three-dimensional aspect of your breath in your spine, in your ribs, and also in your belly. And just let your breath massage the spine. Let your breath. Massage that space just between your shoulders. You might even feel your belly lengthening along the floor. It might be that the pain you felt in your back might not be so apparent. I've just walked my elbows in a bit closer because it suddenly feels a lot easier to do. And again, resting this down through the bones. I can almost feel like my breath reaches my thighs. So I'm not pushing my arms to move the spine, it's happening because of the breath. So walk your hands forwards again onto the floor in front of you and we're going to just rest again on our bellies and then this is a lovely little pose, this one. So as we did with that thread the needle at the beginning of the lesson, just all the way you do is just kind of prop yourself up on your left elbow and then take your right hand Put it onto the floor just underneath your left armpit and then walk it out. So if you were to look at your hands now, if you were to picture it like a clock, it's saying nine o'clock. I want you to take your left hand one in front of you outwards so it's now quarter past nine. So actually kind of, I don't think you can see very well. There you go. It's called the noodle. If your elbows are in front of you, walk them in so you can feel that you've got that connection into your chest. And then all we're going to do then is drop the chin so it's resting on the top arm. And again, take your breath into the backs of the shoulders. Walking your hands back towards 12, taking your left hand this time underneath your right armpit, walk it out to the right, hands are now saying 3 o'clock, take the o'clock hand and bring it to quarter to 3, then walk the hands out, bring the, shoulder, the arms in towards the chest and again rest your head on the top arm and again breathe into the shoulders.
walking your hands again back up towards the yoga block. Use your hands to push yourself up. And again, sink down and surrender. Again, from this place, bringing your elbows into the floor, palms to prayer. Taking the elbows forward as you bring the hands up towards the sky. Relaxing your hands down. Take yourself down and onto your back. I'm just going to pause the camera for a second and then the next thing you're going to see is a picture of my garden. I thought it'd be a little bit better than looking at my face as I tell you how to relax. So just relax yourself down, get a blanket, get a cushion, do whatever you need to do for the next moment and then I promise I shall give you a little relaxation as well. So just one sec. So here we are. Closing your eyes and just feeling the ground beneath the body. And just taking this time just to let every breath you take be as pleasurable and as lengthened as you need to be, taking all the time you need to breathe. Taking all the time you need to breathe in and all the time you need to breathe out. Just taking this time just to begin to notice the body, that physical body. And just checking in, is there anywhere that you're holding on to still, any bits of tension? And just ask yourself why. This is your time just to let go of that tension. Again, just feeling how gravity is your best friend at this time. You know, we're pinned to this earth by gravity. And it's nice just sometimes just to recognise its presence on the body. So we're just going to let breath be our focus just for the next few moments. And all I want us to do is just to not take the natural length of your exhale to be your focal point. Just mentally count how long it takes to breathe out. And then notice how it would feel just to let your inhale be the same length. If it doesn't feel good, let your inhale be whatever length it needs to be. And then just noticing you've got a little pause between the in-breath and the out-breath. So in your mind, you might be drawing the shape of a straw alongside a tiny pause at the top, alongside and a tiny pause at the bottom. But you can make that into a rectangle if you wish. Making those two turnaround points a little bit longer, so gently pausing the breath almost. How would it feel to pause the breath between the in-breath and between the out-breath? So again, just making that little rectangle if you wish, or keeping it in that little straw style shape. But just keeping the breath relaxed. But it would feel nice just to let the breath be relaxed. Now, if it feels good, just let go of that breath. Just return your awareness to just 
how it feels just to be in the centre of the body, all the sensations of the body. Feeling the ground behind the body. Taking all the time you need to breathe and all the time you need to breathe out. So you can stay here for as long as you like. Now you might consider coming out of this movement, bringing your focus to the space at the top of your lips, you know, where the nose and the lips meet the fulcrum. Just take a few breaths here, feeling the breath. Lovely heat exchange. And then we can take our hands maybe towards the floor behind us. And then bringing the knees in towards our tummies, giving ourselves a little hug. And then starting to roll yourselves to one side and then to seated. So, Namaste. Thank you for watching the video. And I'll see you again. Bye.